childhood. Um, I grew up in a very, very small town. No one's ever heard of it. Uh, population of 200, no street lights, I mean no, no stop lights, um, just a gas station, a post office, and a volunteer fire department. Um, so my childhood was very country-ish. You know, a lot of uh, like riding dirt bikes and you know riding, building ramps for my bikes playing uh, baseball and football and stuff with the local kids in the neighborhood or the little village. Um, just very like Andy Griffith kind of small town type childhood, man. Sports were a normal thing for us, you know, just the, the common sports, baseball, football. Um, I, I liked running track, actually. That was kind of my big thing. I liked running, <clears throat> um, something I excelled at, wrestled a little bit. Um, but you know, like my dad was a blue collar worker, you know, so so that was really like what I was encouraged to do. Um, like I said, I grew up in the machine shop, and that was kind of my projected life path. Was like I was going to be a machinist. I was going to take over the shop. He owned the shop. That was sort of what my path was meant to be. That I was really good at it. Um, I picked up on um, mechanical stuff really quick. I'm mechanically inclined. My dad's business was. Uh, growing the whole time and, and doing well. Um, so that was just sort of the path that was laid out for me. Um, and I, I love doing that stuff, but it wasn't the path that was in my head. What was the initial reaction with the family when you sort of didn't follow the family way and, and kind of went off on your own doing this sort of thing, trying to have sports? Well, as a living? I first fell off of sports and working for my dad and stuff when I was in high school and I started getting into drugs and alcohol. Um, again, I just got disconnected because that was like all I knew. All I knew was working and, um, you know, being in the family business and, and kind of living this small town lifestyle. So that was like all I knew. And I just got real disconnected from it. And I was like, this isn't me. This isn't what I want to do with my life. Um, again, I love working on stuff. I love building things um, just because it's natural for me. But I knew from a young age that wasn't what I was going to do. I knew I was meant for bigger things. I try to be like optimistic speaking about uh, my childhood, um, you know, just kind of small town lifestyle and everything. But in reality, it was a pretty fucking negative childhood. You know, my, my family was very uber conservative, old school. Um, and my dad was, you know, borderline abusive, you know. So it was like, of course I'm gonna get disconnected from that, you know what I mean? If it feels more like supportive and more like, you know, we're all in this together type of feel, you know, maybe we would have worked everything out and, and, and things would have done well. But when I started getting into like drugs and alcohol and stuff, that was just a disconnect from, you know, the family. And I was just like, you know, this ain't what I want to do and you're not helping me want to do it. So, um, and you know, no one really reached out during that time and helped me. So I was like, that's why now, like, you know, that was my uh, lowest point in my life. You know, I was going to jail all the time. I was, um, you know, I overdosed on heroin for Christ's sake and they weren't there for me, 
you know, so if you ain't gonna be there for me when I'm down, then I don't need you here when I'm up. So, you know, like I said, I still love them and all, you know, and they are who they are, but, you know, this is my path. And um, again, if they don't wanna be there when I'm down, then fuck them. What's the difference today? Like, I, I noticed you guys didn't have a clock on, so like, what's the game plan for like, what you guys are doing today? So usually, I, so usually I quit. But uh, yeah, we just go until someone dies. It's usually me. <laughs> yeah, you always, got that, always me. You got a nice little battle scar. What was that from? Inside leg kick. Couple, couple inside leg kicks. Mark, you say this is, what he nor this is normal for him, huh? Yeah, just kind of keep mixing it up. Five, five minute rounds, six minute rounds, and distant rounds, anaerobic, aerobic. Looking sharp, man. Real sharp. You guys work good together. Harrison's doing a great job. Coach Harrison's doing a hell of a job this camp. Exciting. He's on point. Money. Did you get your start into martial arts in a traditional discipline, or did you start straight into MMA? So, I fought MMA before I ever even trained. So, I, I signed up for a fight, and I'd never even been to a gym before. So, you know, that story is basically I was at, um, my buddy brought me to a fight. Um, you know, I'd, I'd only seen it on VHS tapes. You know, Tank Abbott was my dude, you know, and um, so I never really even considered doing it, you know, and then we went to this fight and uh, we were doing a bunch of coke. We were all coked up and it was, you know, this old school, what you'd see on TV where they're like uh, guys smoking cigars, betting and and they're like, you know, who wants to fight the champion? And, and I just stood up and I was like, I want to fight this guy tonight, you know? Um, signed up that day, went across the street. There was a sporting goods store, happened to be right across the street, coincidentally enough. Uh, bought me a mouthpiece. There was a restaurant across the street. Went and used their microwave to boil the mouthpiece, come back. Um, my buddy that went there to fight let me borrow his uh, used jock strap and used shorts. Uh, and I fought that night and I won. So, and that was your amateur fight. Was that your uh, first so amateur? I, or I was have, that your first pro I fight? actually. So you probably looked up my record. I have a lot of amateur fights. Um, they're just not on my record for whatever reason. So my first listed amateur fight um, was actually about two weeks after I first went to a gym and actually started training. Wow. Um, I had four or five uh, fights before that. You know, I did this same thing. Um, I did. Um, uh, some San Shao matches, you know, which at the time I thought was kickboxing until I got taken down. Um, yeah, and then, like, you know, back then, I mean, I, I guess there wasn't no commission or anything. So, you know, you could just sign up. You know, I'd just go to the fight, do a couple lines and sign up. Uh, yeah, pay like 30 bucks or whatever. And, um, and if I can find it, I got the trophy somewhere. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have you, to find it. When you say do a couple lines, you told me you sign up, you fill out a couple lines, or did you talk about yeah. you literally did a couple lines? No, literally did a couple lines. Yeah, that that was. I thought it gave me the power to go fight. Yeah. Good, you know, and I actually won, probably I think three times. Um, I fought twice in one night once. Um, and that was when I finally learned my lesson. The second guy that I fought was actually good. You know, all these guys I fought before, they were doing basically the same thing that I was. They were just coming there that night and, you know, it was kind of, you know, maybe drinking or, you know, probably doing coke like me, you know, whatever. And we just fight, you know. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. We are just having fun, you know. Well, finally, like I said, I, I beat this one guy. He tapped out. Uh, I took him down and, and he just tapped out. Um, said that his uh, calf cramped up. Um, so literally just bam like that, you know, it took 20 seconds or something. So they, they come to me and they say, hey, you know, you want to fight again tonight? I said, yeah, no problem. Uh, they put me against this guy who was apparently about to go pro and he was really, really good at the time. Very like a legitimate prospect in Ohio in May at the time. And he just beat the living hell out of me. I mean, he just beat the shit out of me for all three rounds. I don't know how he didn't knock me out. And after, I mean, he even talked to me. He's like, dude, I don't know how I didn't knock you out. He's like, you're definitely tough enough to do this. So, so anyway, I, I, that was what convinced me. Like, I need to get to a gym, you know, and actually uh, see if I can do this. And that's when I moved to Columbus and because I, I wanted to get away from the drugs and alcohol and stuff too. I mean, I was still partying like crazy back then, but 
I started seeing, you know, like the UFC was coming up more and more. Um, this was around like 2003, 2004. I think the Ultimate Fighter maybe had just started. And I was like, you know, there's an actual like possibility of making this a career, you know. Um, I mean, looking back, it's kind of far-fetched. But, you know, in my mind, I was like, you know, I wanted to do it. And I wanted to get away from the, uh, the lifestyle that I was living. I was just drinking every night and partying. So... Anyway, so I moved up here. My brother lived here. He was going to an art college here. Um, so he said I could come stay with him. I knew he's a positive influence. He wasn't a drinker, wasn't a partier. Um, so uh, that got me up here. Uh, walked into a gym the next week. And then I met some real pros, guys that were probably on the UFC's radar or at least good enough to get to the UFC. Um, one guy was like king of the cage champion. Um, one guy fought in... Uh, I forget what it was called, but it was an old organization um, like Tim Sylvia and Robbie Lawler. A lot of the Militich guys fought on it. Um, but anyway, so I got trained with those guys, and then I got the shit really beat out of me, you know, in a gym setting when you really get beat up. So, but I learned so much from them and realized that um, you know the gym thing is actually necessary. <laughs> and who would have thought? Um, so. Yeah, and that was when uh, I got my start. And like I said, I was around positive people, so it just got me away from the drinking and the partying. And, um, you know, I remember the first day I walked in there, how much I loved it, and I connected with the guys. Um, I actually still talk to them today. You know, they're, they're cool guys, man. And um, and that was the day I walked in there. I said, I uh, got the shit beat out of me. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to do this or I'm going to die trying. And that was all there was to it. I said, I, I'm not. I'm not going to look back. I'm. I'm not going to. Uh, I don't think I ever had a thought of doing anything else uh, on my mind since. You know that that was the only thing in my life ever since. At that point, when you made the decision that that was what you do, is that when you got clean or or yeah. started to get clean? Was that yeah. was that it? That was it. Yeah. Yep. Cold turkey, man. And it, I, I say cold turkey. It was kind of a process, to be honest. Like. Because at the time, I didn't really know what it was to be, uh, you know, to live like a professional, you know. So, so, so like, the one thing about me is, like, I was never really, I'm not really an addict in, in the sense of, like, I don't have the disease, you know. I'm, I'm not a, I know what alcoholism is. I've seen it, you know, and it's a real disease. I don't have that disease. So, when I, when I wanted to quit, I could just quit like that. So... But what I would do is, you know, have like a two-week camp, you know, like two weeks before the fight. Like, okay, no drinking, whatever. Uh, but I did get away from the heavy partying. You know, I wasn't living that lifestyle anymore. But I would still drink, like, you know, just relax, you know, socially and stuff. So it wasn't, I wouldn't say cold turkey quite like that. But, um, and then, you know, again, as I started winning fights and started getting into it more and more and started going against tougher and tougher guys and started seeing, again, it's a little bit of a process learning, like, you know, okay, I noticed like when I don't drink, like I, I actually perform better, you know, and, and starting to uh, get more and more motivated, like, you know, and start living more and more professionally all the time. And and uh, by the time I, I decided to turn pro, I was living uh, completely clean and and uh, and completely dedicated and committed a thousand percent to the martial arts. <laughs> Did you ever imagine that you'd still be fighting all these years later when you started out? Mm. In a sense, yes. 
you know, when, again, when I started and I walked into that gym, I said, this is what I'm going to do till the day I die, period. Like, like this is what I love. You know, this is, uh, I tell you about, I married the sport, you know, and I'm committed husband, you know, and I'm going to die on the mats one day, you know, that I, I, there's nothing else I really want to do. So in terms of the martial arts, I knew I'd be doing those for my whole life. Um, in terms of, you know, fighting in the UFC or at a high level, um, you know, that's just because of my love for the martial arts, I think, you know, I, I don't, there wasn't really no thought of tomorrow. You know, there wasn't no thought of like, I mean, I, back then, I mean, no one knew the UFC would even be around today. You know what I mean? Like back then it was like, you know, the ultimate fighter just started. It was like, you know, the UFC could be gone any day, bankrupt, you know? So it wasn't, you know, th that type of dream wasn't even, uh, you know, possible to have, you know? But uh, like I said, I knew that I was a committed martial artist for life and there wasn't anything else that I wanted to do with my life. When you say, you know, I married, you married MMA, you married that life, you married that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Was there was that ever to the ever to the detriment of like your real life, your real marriage? Oh, and absolutely. Other marriages? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every relationship I've ever had has suffered because of my martial arts. I've always put it first, and um, I think it's something I've learned to balance better over throughout my life. But uh, again, you know, like that's something that has been with me for a long time, and it's something that saved my life, and it's something I, I've been committed to for a long time. So it's always going to be first um, but again there's a balance too you know when I say it's gonna be first it doesn't mean that um, they're second the relationship has to be second even though I think I've done that a lot of times but uh, it's also about having the right uh, partner to understand that too and understand who I am and and what my goals are and and uh, where I come from you know and things like that and and I expect the same on my partner too, you know, like, like I don't need to be number one, right? You should have something that, you know, beyond another person that, uh, that brings you fulfillment too. You know, like I, I, I don't expect any different out of you either. So um, I think there's a, again, there's a, just a balance, you know? And, and most fighters, including me, aren't good at balancing, but it's a, as we mature, we, we, we get better at it. Like when I, or just when you started, yeah. what's the biggest difference between you then and you now? Um, I think probably one of the bigger differences, I think there's a lot of big differences, so hard to kind of rank and say which one is the biggest difference, but one of the bigger ones is, you know, when I was doing it before, I had no idea what could or would come of it. You know, I was just doing it just out of pure love, you know, and, um, like everything was, I mean, it didn't matter how tired I was. It didn't matter what was going on in my life. Like I was getting to the gym, period. Um, and not that that's not the case now, but the difference now is now I'm, you know, a, a lot more um, organized and structured with the training and and how I go about approaching the day-to-day -day training, how I focus and how I set goals and you know, before it was like, I'm just going to the gym, period, no matter what. Um, and now it's, you know, there's a purpose behind everything. There's an intention behind everything. Um, and then the other big difference, too, would be back then it was extremely selfish. Um, and not in a bad way, but, you know, I was, I didn't have kids or relationships or businesses. It didn't have anything else, you know, like literally nothing else in my life going for me. Yeah, didn't even have a job half the time, you know, so there was, it was like literally just all about me being in the gym training. Um, so now there's probably a lot of my intentions, when I talk about the intentions and the goals and stuff, a lot of it's like, you know, to inspire my kids or, or help others and um, improve the martial arts community around, uh, around my community, around my neighborhood. And 
so a lot of different uh, layers to that rather than just solely I'm going to the gym training and I'm just going to try to find the toughest guy and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Uh, I've kind of been, I've trained on and off with Dustin for a long time. Unfortunately, he's such a long drive out there to his uh, spot that that's been the only kind of hold back from training with him more often. Um, but, uh, you know, not too long ago, I don't remember when, but not too long ago, you know, I just hit him up. I was like, man, you know, I need to commit to it, man. Like, like he, Dustin's so amazing, man. He just, you know, he, he gets in there and grinds right along with you, pushes you through the workout. Um, you know, so, and he's really smart with everything. Uh, so it's just a great place, just a great attitude, man. He's always positive, um, just always motivating. And to be honest, like, again, what we do, it, it ain't rocket science. So, I mean, you can take it as far as you want with the science and everything, but ultimately you gotta get in there and just do some hard work. And the, the, the number one limiting factor is generally going to be like discipline or motivation, you know, and you could be the most disciplined guy in the world, but if you don't have at least some motivation, like you're not going to do that extra rep. You're not going to do that extra sprint, you know? And so having someone like Dustin around to push that extra sprint, because he's always down to do it. And it's amazing. I don't know how he does it, but it's amazing. So I can't say enough good things about him. this close to the fight you know with Matt it's all really about him just feeling good right I mean the hard work was done was really you know front loaded early in camp you know we're lifting a ton of weights we're out there you know running hills when we're you know 12 16 weeks out uh, you know but right now the workouts need to be very short very intentional very crisp you know a lot of what we call GPP which is general physical preparedness you know we're getting him to be you know to be strong and in shape in certain positions uh, but it's kind of less specific than a lot of the maybe weightlifting exercise we were doing kind of earlier in camp. Anyone that's been doing what Matt's been doing for as long as he has is going to have a lot of wear and tear. Most of them are never going to really make it this far if they haven't taken care of their body. Uh, so I think, you know, kind of the, part of the challenge for me, you know, as a strength coach is I have to give him just enough and not too much. You know, if I'm working with, you know, younger wrestlers and younger fighters, they walk in the door and it might be, hey, I have everything planned out and I'm telling them exactly what they need to do. With Matt, I mean, he's been here and done that so many times. He knows what his body needs. So it's a little bit more of a collaboration when we're putting together the programming. I still have a, an idea, you know, with the periodization, where it's going to go and how we need to taper and stuff. But I don't need to do anything drastically different with him. I don't need to teach him a ton of new things now. You know, this is 29th or 28th, you know, fight in the big show. So when he walks in, the first thing I say is, you know, how are you feeling today? You know, what, uh, what do you feel like you need today? And so even though I already have a plan in place, I may change that based on how he feels, based on how he felt in sparring last night, and based on what he's gonna do later in the day. Because really right now, I just need him to be crisp, I need him to feel good and move well. The, the feel when you come in into a gym like this, there's nothing fancy to it, you know, the weights are rusty, um, the ground is, you know, kind of dirty. And I think it kind of takes people back to um, either where they first kind of fell in love with training. You know, a guy like Matt probably first learned to fight, you know, in someone's basement or someone's garage. You know, even with uh, weightlifters that come in, it reminds them of the, maybe their high school weight room when they lifted in a barn somewhere or something. So I think when you strip things away, you strip away all the amenities, then all you're left with is, you know, what you're doing and the effort that you're putting into it.
would it be wrong, you know, to think that there are some similarities to the gym principles and how you fight? Even when you look at the place, it's not glitzy. It's not glamorous. Like he says, you know, there's rust on the on some of the stuff, you know. Is there something to that style that resonates with your fight style as well? It probably is, you know. Like I got, I, I like to keep that uh, culture, lifestyle of some grit deep inside of me, you know. So yeah, just being around it and just knowing like, you know, you're gonna have rust on your hands when you walk out of there, you know, mixed with the chalk and the sweat and maybe a little bit of blood. Um, and, you know, knowing like, you know, if, if it, I don't know, like, if, you know, you get you get a little, maybe pop a blood vessel in your nose or something and, you know, is, they're not gonna be like, oh, you gotta clean that up, whatever, you're like, nah, man, you just, you grind through it, you got another set to go, you know? Um, so. I, there's definitely something to be said about that. I, I try to keep that sort of, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but I try to keep that um, it's like an edge. that aura. The aura? Yeah, just keep that aura of grit, you know, because uh, there's a, again, it's a balance, you know, because we, we got to fine tune things too, you know, and we got to be clean. I want to, you know, I want my fight to, I want to go in there and be clean and smooth and pretty and, um, but you don't know when you got to pull that grit out, you know? It's like grit and grace, you know? You got to keep the two, you got to have both. So I try to keep, uh, I try to keep both in the, in, the, in the repertoire all the time. Generally, like outside of a camp, like my main focus is like building structure. You know, that's the, as a kid, I think of it like a car, right? Like most, a lot of people say, like, you know, you, as an athlete, you're like a race car, but we're like a demolition derby car, actually. You know? so, the first thing a demolition derby car needs is a strong frame, right? Because he's going to run into a lot of other cars, right? So that, that's what I try to, you can't have a strong enough frame. I don't care how strong your motor is, your frame has to be absolutely solid as can be. So that's really where my main focus is outside of a camp. And hopefully I achieve that by the time I get to a fight. By the time I get to a fight then it's time, or a fight camp, that's when it's time to uh, get the motor strong as it can be and revved up and you just want to fine tune that demolition derby car a little bit more along the way but you got to start with that big base with the gpp and and the structure and then um, start fine tuning that engine and putting uh, some nitrous on it by the time you get into camp or by the time you get to the fight <laughs> Having the right guys around can make you or break you, man. You know, we can't do this on our own. Um, but at the same time, it's going to come down to you. So there's a, again, there's a balance there. You know, you got to have the right guys that are going to push you and motivate you. And um, But I think the, the main thing with that, though, like, because all that's really going to come to yourself. It's great to have them push you. It's great to have them motivate you. It's great to have them there to uh, when you don't feel like doing it and all that stuff. But it's going to come down to you. You know, it's going to be, you know, how do you handle yourself? And what do you, you know, what, how do you get yourself to the gym when you don't feel like going to the gym? You know, or when you put on those those gloves another day and they're filled with the sweat from earlier and you know you're like you ain't even warmed up yet you know and you're like fuck bro this soggy ass glove sucks man like that's a real thing that's like so annoying you know um or you're on your third session of the day and you're just like you just want to go home man you know you just want to watch some tv and chill so um so that's when the, you know those guys really come in handy but at the same time, it's got to be you, man. You know, if you ain't got the, if you ain't got the fortitude to do that, it don't matter who's with you. You know, I've seen enough guys that got all the right guys around them, but they don't have the mental capacity to handle that shit. So they, they end up falling off. You know, it's got to be inside yourself, man. And, um, and I think it was uh, Chris Eubank Jr. said it best, man. You know, we, 
we've uh, when you're a fighter like you you've you have put yourself into a life of solitary confinement you know so you have to know how to deal with that you know you, you can't expect no one else to be there to push you you can't expect no one else to be the one that that um you know it's got to be it's inside man and and that's the, that's the key to this game that I've learned. You know, everything is inside. Everything is right in here, man. It, it don't matter who's around you. It don't matter. You know, ain't nothing gonna make you a better fighter other than you. Hey. How important is it to have Mark in your corner and what does that mean to have him there to support you? Man, Mark's like just the one of the best guys ever, man. You know, he, he just really I don't even know how he does it, but every day he, he's just motivated and, and, and pushes and, you know, it, it, I think, it's, I think the, the, the big thing with him is, you know, he's a competitor at heart, uh, always will be, but I think, you know, he's going to die that way. I mean, he, he's a, one of the most intense competitors I've ever seen in my life, you know, and, and I mean, I think we all know that from watching all of his competitions throughout life. but. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, what else to even say, man. Like, the guy's just, you know, he's just there when you need him, you know? And, and it's, a, it's a big, big aspect of um, of my game, man. Just having him there. He's just like, like grandpa or dad or something, you know? What's the difference of what you see now of Matt Brown from when you saw him um, maybe that first time? He just continues to improve and, and perfect all areas. Muay Thai, black belt, wrestling, he's a black belt. He just needs to keep his skills sharp. Um, and, and to do it at 41, it, 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 it's a challenge. Uh, it's a grind. His body's been through quite a bit, but uh, I'm just real proud of the way he sucks it up. He don't complain. He gets through the practices, and uh, he's ready for another grind, uh, another knockout. Let's, let's get the record, bro. And your fight styles are both very similar in the, in the fact that you guys never shied away about meeting somebody in the middle of the octagon. You know, you never shied away from a fight. Was there something about him that did you ever recognize a piece of yourself in him as well? Well, we're very different, but uh, we're very similar. Uh, our mindsets are, are we're fighters. Um, you, you're you're going to fight how you prepare, and uh, you got to prepare your mind mentally to, to be able to, for your mind to be able to get through a fight, you have to, you have to really, really prepare right and, and get your confidence through the roof. And that's what I think I, I try to help with Brown. I try to bring him confidence because confidence is, uh, without that, you have nothing. And uh, I, I try to boost his confidence, bring more ale in there and just make sure he's uh, pushing. Uh, when, when the grind gets real hard and dragging, uh, I'm just there to, to get him back up and get through, the, get through the day one day at a time. You know, I think a lot of people on the outside forget that there's other real life that happens with fighters as well. What are maybe some things that people forget that fighters deal with maybe that we don't think about on the outside? Life, man, regular life, ex-wives, kids. He's a, he's a great father. He's got uh, three beautiful children and he takes care of them. They're, they're number one on his priority list. He makes sure they're taken care of and, uh, but he makes sure he gets in the gym as well. He, he, He's very organized. He's on top of things, and he, um, uh, he's got everyday life battles just like everybody out there. You got to deal with them. You got to put them to the side, and you, you can only control yourself. And uh, he, he does it very well. He's a very confident man, and uh, that's why he's successful. What's the best way for him to stay um, in peak performance, and how does he how does he do it so well? Um, it's uh, a little bit of luck, I guess, uh, but preparation. Um, if you if you stay in shape and, and and prepare right when after fights a lot of fighters get down that's the that, that's where the possibility of getting hurt comes in right when they're first trying to climb back up that ladder but uh you, you just have to protect yourself in there you have to put your ego at the side 
And if you're in a scramble situation in, in the practice room uh, and potentially you, you see something twisted wrong, this and that, you have to you have to be smart enough to give up the takedown. It's only practice. You're not getting paid today. And it's coming from me who never gave up a damn takedown in my life in practice. But I ain't saying that was right. But I didn't like giving up takedowns. It didn't matter where it was. But sometimes you got to bail out and, and protect your body. And he, he's real smart. Um, but saying that... He's not real smart. He, he sometimes uh, because he's so competitive, you don't like bailing out, you know. And sometimes you got to say that's enough for today, and because uh, he's got nagging injuries. But uh, you got to you got to say that's enough for today, and that that's kind of where uh, I have to step up. And I don't like saying that's enough for today. I rarely, rarely would say something like that. But uh, with this guy. I have to tell him, let's get, let's get out of here, man. Let's get out of here and come back tonight. You got through today's workout. You're still healthy. You get through a workout. You get through a wrestling workout and no injuries happen. That's a good day. I think when you train hard, you live hard, you also play hard. So looking at yourself, you know, these past years, what's the, uh, I guess, the journey like been like for you as well along this line from your life in MMA afterwards and to where you are now helping mentor uh, younger fighters as well? Uh, it's changed my life 100% for the better. Um, I checked into rehabilitation, I paid attention, I learned. It was like being in college, only I'm learning about how to live life um, sober. And uh, it was the best thing, best choice I've ever made in my life. Um, going on one year now, and I, I, I've never felt better mentally in my entire life. I'm, I'm completely at peace. I know how to deal, handle situations a lot better. I learned so much in there, and anybody struggling, and there's millions and millions of people struggling, way more than anybody knows. It's something you gotta, it's, it's, it's gonna end up in death if you don't get help. That's, that's what always happens, it ends up with death, unless you get help and get control of the situation. And I'm, I'm I always like making people proud, especially my family, and uh, um, I see how happy they are. It makes me happy. Is there something about the mentality of somebody that fights that maybe makes them more enjoy that side? You go hard in one thing, you go hard in another thing? No, this this disease, alcoholism and addiction, it, it does not um, uh, discriminate. It, it don't pick an athlete, it don't pick anybody. Um, it'll get you and it, it never stops until it takes everything. And these are the things I've learned and um, I've been so blessed. And I just had to, I had to mentally realize how blessed and how, how lucky I have been. And I'm fortunate to be here. Things, it wasn't my time to go, but there was a, uh, Probably plenty of times I, I shouldn't really be here right now, and I, I thank the Lord for that. He kept me around, and now I feel like I have to help other people. Uh, and I love helping fighters. I think I'm great at it. I think I'm the best motivator in the world. And now I need to focus on I can reach out and help a lot of people with addiction problems and get them in there and give themselves a chance. Because even if you do go to rehab, the percentage, the percentage of people succeeding is very low, 10%. And I'm going to be one of the 10%. For, for those that are maybe are struggling out there, what was the, that might be looking for when they finally hit that turning point? What was the final straw or the, the turning point for you? What was it that made you finally say enough's enough and then I need, I need to fix this? Was, was there ever the lowest of the low or something where you finally were just like, this is it? You know, what was it for you um, that that was the moment that you knew you had to change? You know, some people don't know. Some people don't want to admit it. Some people don't know. I wasn't one of those people. I knew I was struggling, but I wasn't ready to do anything about it. And um, I isolated myself. And uh, I, I think uh, I was sort of putting messages out there to my people. that I was struggling. But uh, uh, my best friend, uh, Wes Sims, he showed up at the door one morning, and uh, yeah, it was rock bottom. And uh, fortunately, he wasn't intimidated, and he got me to go. So I'm here today. Is MMA and is being able to give back, is this helping you work through 
your issues and keep you focused and give that extra thing to focus on that keeps the mind organized. So in a sense, is MMA helping to save your life? Yes, for sure. I mean, it may save my life more than one time, but uh, I had to stay busy. And I really, really enjoy giving back to these younger fighters. And uh, um, I'm not afraid to think that I'm pretty good at what I do because I did it. I got the respect from these guys. When I walk away, I got eyeballs on my back and we'll still see you. And ain't nobody going to be slouching, slacking when I'm around. And I have the I have the motivational skills to take somebody to the top. And uh, um, it, it, I... I, I I do kind of live through these fighters now. It, it really brings me a, a sense of peace and, and happiness and uh, um, a sense of uh, getting something accomplished. Would you say that MMA saved your life? A hundred percent. Yeah, a thousand percent. And that's where uh, I think me and Mark have a good connection on that, you know, where um, whether, whether it saved my life from in terms of the drugs and alcohol partying, I'm not sure because I, you know, I don't think that was again. I'm, I'm not. I don't have the disease. You know, I don't think that's me. I think I was, it was a phase in my life, and I just took that phase all the way to the. To, I took that fucking elevator to the roof, man. Um, but I, I think I would have got all that. But it certainly saved my life in terms of, like I've been working at a factory. You know what I mean? Like, like I wouldn't be fulfilled. I wouldn't be happy with my life. Um, I mean, maybe I would have, who knows, man? You know, like I, I was, man, who knows, man? But I think it, it, it completely saved um, my life, man. But I, I, you know, I can't say for sure. Who knows what, what would have happened? I can't, no one can say. At 41 years of age, are you happy or proud of the career that you've had so far in MMA? Um, you know what, to be honest, I don't think a lot about uh, the past of my career. Uh, the way I've always lived my life and the way I always want to live my life is it has nothing to do with, uh, I, I don't want to even think about what I've done. I want to think about what I'm going to do. And I still think that I have big things that I can do and I still think I'm getting better. I still think that, um, you know, I, I don't even care what was happening in the past in my career, man. I can't change all that. Um, I know a lot of people, um, you know, look back on their careers, take pride in it, but I'm not that guy, man. I don't give a shit. Like, like, uh, I look at every everything, uh, this whole fight thing, the, the way that I viewed it from the beginning. Again, I'm married to martial arts, and I'm doing this to the day I die. Every fight is just a picture in time of where my martial arts was on that day. You know, sometimes the path went left, sometimes it went right, sometimes it went down, sometimes it went up. So I don't even give a shit about that. I want my path to keep going up. And, and that's all that I'm focused on right now is the future. Fuck the past. Have the thoughts on when you want to retire come into mind at this point? Is there a, like a target date, a target number of fights in your mind? Or is any of that stuff even entered in your mind at some point? Uh, it certainly crossed my mind. Um, and mainly just the, with the injuries. You know, like it's, it's not an easy sport, you know. And um, I can't do what I once could do. So... Um, you know, so I, I still look. I still look at right now. I just look one fight at a time. Um, I mean, I've I won three of my last five by knockout. So, and I plan on getting another knockout. So, you know, you can't say it's time to retire when you're out there knocking motherfuckers out, man. You know, it's, uh, last year I just knocked a guy out. You know, it's like a good guy. You know, it wasn't like I just some idiot off the streets. You know, so you know, a well-trained professional. So, and I think I still got a, a I, I think I, I might even surprise myself. I'm gonna surprise a lot of people and I think I might even surprise myself. Um, my abilities, um, I, I shock myself in the gym all the time, some of the things I'm able to do. So, as long as I, can, I go out there on fight night and I perform the way that I can, um, I'm gonna blow some motherfuckers' minds. What do you want your legacy to be when you do finally retire? <laughs> um, you know, I haven't really thought about that a lot. Um, I think we all want to be remembered, right? We all want to be, you know, remembered as like the champion or the, you know, the great fighter. Um, so, you know, I never got the belt. 
yet. So, you know, not going to be remembered for that, unfortunately. But I think the big thing for me is what I would like is that I kind of like I represent like the the you know the blue collar guy, you know, the everyday guy, the you know the, like coming from a small town, coming from uh you know nothing, like like you know I wasn't some star athlete in high school. I wasn't the the I don't know. I wasn't like the homecoming king, you know. Uh I wouldn't say I'm a normal guy either. But I think I relate to the normal guy, you know, the blue collar guy, the guy working construction and the guy, you know, just trying to feed his family, trying to make an honest living. Um, you know, I kind of represent that. Um, I, I think I think I, I, I represent that guy, man. And, you know, I want to inspire those people. Because, um, you know, that, that's the majority of people in the world, you know, and I want to inspire those people. Let, and they can see they can be great. You know, we all have greatness in us. You just got to find, you know, what it is and, and how to how to get it out there. Um, and then you got to work your ass off, you know, and that's what I've done. So I hope I can inspire everybody to do that, you know, and Inspire everybody to say, fuck it, man. Fuck what everybody thinks. Fuck what everybody cares about you or, or what our people say about you. And, you know, like this shit, like, like that's the biggest problem I see when I, when I look at, you know, I ain't trying to change the world or nothing, man. But just when I see other people, society as a whole, everybody just cares what everybody else thinks, man. That's a, like, a, so fucked, man. That holds people back so bad, I think. Um, th this whole... Uh, especially with the social media and stuff, man. Like everybody wants to put out this image of what they are, and it's not really who they are. And um, I, I'm just about like, just be a real motherfucker. Do the best you can. Get as far as you can. Um, find that greatness in you, and and let's you know, let's change the world like that, man. Tell me a little bit about the gym and the the, the coffee business and any other possible businesses that you got, you know, brewing <laughs> in your head. Um, but talk a little bit about that and what was the, the genesis of why you created those things? Okay. Um, both the coffee and the gym kind of came out of knowing that eventually I will have to retire. And I didn't want to wait till I retired to build something because businesses take time to build. So I just wanted to have it already kind of in the books. Um, but with the gym, I also started out with the idea or with the, the thought in my mind, you know, my kids my boys particularly were just getting to the age where um, they were ready to start training martial arts and I didn't want to trust to take them. Um, well, partially not, not want to trust, you know, I wanted to have supervision over who was training them and watch them train and work with them. But I also, um, you know, my, my vision for my kids class at my gym, we call it the warrior kid program. We don't call it um, the jujitsu program, or and we have a jujitsu and we have a kickboxing, but we call it the Warrior Kid program because I want these kids exposed to everything. I want them exposed to judo, jujitsu, gi, no gi jujitsu, wrestling, uh, kickboxing, muay thai, boxing. So that's the the concept of the program. You see, if if I didn't have my gym, what I would have to do is I would have to take them to a jujitsu gym, pay a membership there, and then I'd have to take them to a boxing gym or a Muay Thai gym, not very many of those around, and pay a membership there, and then maybe a, a judo spot, and, and then a wrestling spot, right? So rather, I created a program that's holistic at my gym. So um, my kids were a huge inspiration for this because I said I want them involved in everything. And um, I don't force them to do any of it, you know? So like some of the programs they don't even take, and then they go back and forth. like. My one son, he was doing a gi for a while, then he got out of it and then put it back on. And, you know, I don't, I don't force him. I say, look, the gym's fun, have fun with it. And what you make of it's what you make of it. We have all the programs. Um, but that was kind of the whole idea of this warrior kid program. And that was a huge part of why I made that the way that I made it and the way I, uh, I made my gym. And um, eventually, Maybe I'll uh, have a warrior kid gym, completely separate, uh, just for kids, right? Um, completely separate from my gym. Maybe even 
maybe franchise or something one day. I don't know. We'll see. But um, so that's the idea behind that. And then the coffee, I mean, look, I love coffee. My business partner happens to love coffee too and, and somehow sources the best damn coffee I've ever had. So um, that was kind of just out of a, you know, sort of a little passion project that you know, has turned into something pretty decent for us. Um, outside of that, um, maybe future plans, maybe, um, I, I've thought about a few different things. I might be a firefighter, like, I've considered this in the sense of just, uh, you know, I think it's a very noble career, it's a very honorable honorable career, and I think there's probably, probably still get an adrenaline rush, right? Still get some intensity out of it, you know, and some potential of dying or something, you know, <laughs> which I just ha seem to have to have in my life for it to be fun. Um, but also, you know, I, I would also like to do um, probably like educating, you know, and for strength and conditioning for for um, MMA um, for kids in particular. I think is something um, is something I, I certainly want to do um, for the Warrior Kid programs. I have a strength and conditioning program for the kids. I think that's something uh, very lost in our in our, our fucking society, right? Like, Everybody still thinks your kid's gonna stun his growth if he lifts weights. I mean, it's so stupid. Um, but just teaching the kids to be strong and fit, you know? And again, some kids maybe not even like martial arts, but maybe we can get them strong, right? Whatever. Um, but at least at minimum, uh, educating people on this. Um, and I still think the strength and conditioning industry is lacking a lot for MMA. Uh, I think there's some very good, smart people working on it, like the PI, the UFC PI, and, um, you know, I could name off, like, some researchers, scientists, stuff, but um, none of them have done it and studied it. I've studied it and I've done it, and I've getting pegged on myself for many years, so I think I have a lot of potential in that. Um, it's just a matter of knowing how to, or learning how to uh, express it. You know, that's the tough part, right? Um, but, you know, and then I want to coach guys, too. You know, uh, I love being around the sport. I want to be around it for the rest of my life. So uh, coaching them and working with them because even though, like I said, I'll be a martial artist for life, so I'll keep training uh, for sure. But I'm not going to be able to train the intensity, you know, with all the injuries um, and the age is eventually going to catch up. So, you know, you gotta, if you can't do, you teach. Well, let's say you'd be a, the gnarliest uh PE teacher for an elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The these PE uh, the, these schools need people like me. To be honest, um, I don't think I would. You know, I, I don't think I would excel in the day to day uh, being a PE teacher. But I would love to consult with the schools and, and teach them. You know how to not raise these kids to be little bitches. Um, I mean, when I, you know, my kids have their friends over all the time and they, and I talk to them about, you know, their friends at school and stuff. I mean, these kids are pussies these days, man. And I, there's no other way to put it. They are straight up pussies. These kids, maybe it was that way when I was a kid. I don't know. I don't remember being that way. I mean, we got in fights in, in school all the time, but um, just when I hear these kids talk and um, the way my kids talk about them, I mean, the crying, the whining, the complaining, the addiction to uh, their phones and their video games and being inside. I mean, these kids are just pussies, man. And, and that is not good for our society. And, and this next generation, I'm not excited about the way it's going to turn out. Recently, the UFC's let a lot of fighters fight out their contracts. Does that scare you any? You know, I thought that... Um, it actually did make me nervous before, um, and I texted Dana one time um, when when I was coming up to my last contract at the end, and he was like, "Hell no, we're giving you a raise, bro." And I was like, "All right, sweet," and resigned. So I think the UFC is cool with me, you know. I hope so. Um, that was after the conduct fight, so that's how I, I, it was a three fight deal. Um, but after this one, I think I'm gonna ask for a eight fight deal. Um, you know, let's get eight more and let's call it a day after that. Eight more, huh? Yeah, I mean, look, if I can't get back to the top 10 after eight fights, then, you know, what are you doing, you know? Uh, if I can, then 
then I will. And then, of course, I could resign and get as many more fights as I want. But, you know, that, that's enough fights, I think, to prove myself. And, yeah, so hopefully they'll do it. And, um, that's, and that's, you know, probably two fights a year at this point in my life. Um, you know, that's another four years. So, you know, I'd be 45. I'd be getting close to being the oldest fighter ever. I'd love to break that record. When you start getting closer to that, does that become almost enough, like, as a goal, like, wanting to be that longevity guy? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I try not to think about it that way. You know, again, I try to keep it one fight at a time and, like, not get focused on that kind of stuff. Um, but I've had, so not really strict goals, but I've had the goals in my head before to have the most fights in the UFC or the longest tenure in the UFC or be the oldest fighter ever in the UFC, all these kinds of things. And... Uh, it's not not necessarily a focus of mine, and I wouldn't say it's a goal. Like, I write down, I'm going to fucking get this goal, but yeah. it's something I'd love to happen, any of those. Yeah, because I know... Uh, and the most knockouts. That's the number one. That's the, that's the one I want the most, right? Um, uh, if fucking Derek Lewis would quit knocking people out, then... <laughs> That's a hard get, one. He's kind of got one, uh, one flavor of I know, punch. I know, right? It's hard to... How do you compete with a heavyweight, you know? <laughs> But you just, you never know how, you know, what your life's going to be yeah. like. You know, you can't predict a future like that. So, again, it's not a goal you're going to write down and set for yourself, I don't think. You know, my goal is to get back to the top ten. You know, that's the primary goal. Not, you know, be fighting um, just to be fighting. You know, just to be the oldest guy or anything like that. If the UFC didn't renew a contract, would you look to continue elsewhere? Possibly. Um, it's something I, I would just have to, um, yeah, you know, if the UFC didn't give, didn't re-sign me, I, I would just have to think about, like, a, I'd love to do um, some kickboxing. I mean, that's really, like, my main love, like some Muay Thai or something, but um, it'd be also hard to get up for a, you know, you're not getting paid in Muay Thai, you know, so it'd be hard to get up for a fight like that, but um, at my age, so... I don't know. We see, man. Maybe a bare knuckle or something. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be excited to do anything else. You know, I love the UFC and I, I love getting a chance to fight the top guys in the world, and that's what I want to do. So um, I wouldn't get excited to do anything else. Um, so we'd have to just cross that bridge if 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 it ever gets there. Hope not. In the upcoming fight or any fight in your future, what can you promise the viewers that they will see? Um, I hate promising anything. You know, we we get asked this question. Oh, what can they expect? Yeah, to see? yeah. You know that, that they ask this question. Um, you know, I, I certainly can't promise anything, but I know. You know, the, the same as I've done, like you know, the past ten, fifteen years, whatever my career. Like I, I'm going to push myself to the limit, and I'm going to get in there and and do the best I can. You know, I'm not going to back down from no one. I'm not going to pity patter around I'm not gonna run from anyone I'm not gonna dance like we're gonna fight and we're gonna get into a fist fight an elbow fight and and uh, you know one of us is probably gonna get finished most of the time and you know I can't really promise or predict much more than that you know I'm a, and I think the way my skills are coming now I think uh, you know you guys might see some things that you never expected I could do, like some things that um, you, know, you just didn't know I was even capable of.